in this program. Let's talk about our memory, remembering the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's get into the Word. Welcome to the Anchor Hour. I don't know about you, but my memory seems to slip more and more as the days pass. You know, I have to take extra effort to remember the important things of the day that is at hand. So, you know, I have to to make some notes. I have to repeat things over in my mind as not to forget uh, when uh, it is time that it gets done and that I have to study the details a little bit more closely that I would know the importance of that task so that it will take priority in my mind. So the things of Christ are far more important than my day-to-day, uh, daily to-do list. You know, but still, I let the spiritual life of Christ slip from my mind. So I must, as we do our normal stuff, I must study the details. The Word of God is the way I study the details of Jesus Christ that I would not forget. So the Word of God, as not to forget my Savior. Jesus said in John chapter 5 and verse 39, Search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So I must study the details, but I also must take some notes, as not to forget Christ daily. That's why when 2 Timothy 2.15, it tells me to study, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I also must repeat the scriptures over in my mind as not to forget my Jesus. We're told in Psalms chapter 1 in the first two verses, it said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and he doth and doth he meditate day and night? I must repeat the scriptures. Okay? Psalm 119 verse 11 says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee, that I would remember Jesus. So what do we need to remember about Jesus? Many things about the scriptures um, over and over again encourage us to keep Christ in our mind, our heart, and and our soul, that it would change us and, and move us to, as the new creatures in Christ, as the ambassadors of Christ, to live that life that is pleasing to Him. And there's a testimony to the lost world around us that they might know Christ also for the, sa- for the saving of their soul from the uh, eternal lake of fire. So what do I need to remember? What do you need to remember? What do we need to remember about Jesus Christ? Well, we ought to remember His name. Whosoever you do or whatsoever you do in word and deed do all in the name of the Lord Jesus uh, in the Lord Jesus Colossians 3:17 Psalm 20 verse 7 says some trust in chariots and some in horses but we will remember the name of the Lord our God he is not the man upstairs he's not the the one uh, or I don't know the generic ways that sometimes we refer to Christ. We all need to remember him by name. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. We have salvation only in the name of Christ. That's what we're reminded of in, in Acts chapter 4, verse 12. It said, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men by whereby we must be saved. So we need to remember his name that He is the Savior, and by Him we are saved by His grace through, our, through the faith of Jesus Christ. We're also to remember His works. For, uh, Chronicles, 1 Chronicles 16, 12 says, Remember His marvelous works that He hath done. You know, we should think uh, of Christ's work in, in creation. We're told in the New Testament that He created all things for Himself. For by him were all things created. Colossians chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 1 tells us this. Everything around us is the creation that he has made. And it is in a place that, you know, frankly, that sometimes we look at this world and, and we, we shake our head in disgust. But he, is, he created it for his glory as he created you. And then if you're saved, you are you've been born again, you've been recreated in Christ Jesus, and are you pleasing Him in what He has created in you? You know, we remember His works of salvation. He said, it is finished. The work of Calvary's cross is what saves, not the work of the hands of man and religion or 
good deeds or any of those sort of things. It is His work that is done in salvation. And we have to remember, He finished His ministry. His everything that He was meant to do when He came to this earth uh, in the form of sinful men without sin, He declared, I have finished the works which Thou gave us me to do. He tells that in the prayer. And by the way, it's the most beautiful and the most important prayer of the Bible, in my opinion, is John 17. He says that my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to and finish his work. You know how thoroughly the Lord Jesus Christ committed and devoted himself to the Father's work, that is to bring salvation to you and I, that we would have it freely and then also be able to be a son of God, that be the ambassadors of Christ. All the different things that we are told as, uh, as saved people that we are, to be able to do something for him, to live for him, to remember him. We are to remember his love. You know, to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge. It tells us that in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? We're told in, or reminded about in Romans eight thirty five. See, love one uh, said there. I'm sorry. In, in, in John 15, he says, "Love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, than that a man lay down his life for his friends." That's in John 15. So as we think of his love, we will be thankful and respond in worship and love and obedience. We're told in John 3, 16, that he so loved the world that he gave. And he talks about the cross. See, the affliction of that cross, the cross is, that's the show. And the, the, we were, were reminded of the cross of his love for all of us, that he died on that. His love for whosoever will. Because in that cross, we should be remembering, not as a little trinket around our neck or on our dashboard, but that, that empty cross is to remind us of his affliction. Lamentations gives that, that little uh, reflection of the prophecy of what Christ uh, will suffer on the cross. And he says, Remember, remembering mine affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall. See, we must remember that, uh, remember Christ's suffering uh, and his affliction for us. And as they pierce my hands and my feet, we're, we're told in Psalm 22. In Psalm 22, we're also reminded and told in prophecy, and we know on this side of the cross these things had, had been fulfilled. He says, all my bones are out of joint. My tongue cleaveth to my jaws. We're told in Isaiah 53, he was oppressed and he was afflicted. We're told in, in Mark and in the Gospels, they platted a crown of thorns and put it about his head. They smote him on the head with a reed and did spit on him. They mocked him. They crucified him. We need to remember, he suffered for your sake, my sake, to take away our sin, that we trust it by faith. And we remember this, our little, our light affliction, as Paul said it, is but for a moment, and so what we should be doing today is remembering Christ. It ought to motivate us to live for Christ, to be everything that he wants us to be, and certainly to be a witness for Christ. We're to remember his resurrection is exaltation. The resurrection has secured the, the, your salvation. Without the resurrection, uh, we have believed in vain, we're told in the Bible. We, rem we need to remember that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. You ought to do that every Sunday, not just at the Easter time. Every, every Sunday is Resurrection Sunday around here, and we remember his resurrection because his resurrection not only was that he raised from the dead, but he is also exalted in heaven. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Have you ever gotten to the place that you had a desire not to know him better and the power of his resurrection? Philippians 3.10. We're not only, not only remember Christ who suffered and bled and died, which is the gospel, but also Jesus Christ as the one who rose from the dead and now lives in the power of an endless life, 
He is our great high priest who ever lives to make intercession for us. That great high priest is who we go to in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, that we confess our sins as his children, and that he says he is just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We have a great high priest that is on our side to help us to be able to always go forth uh, uh, in, in a spiritual condition that will testify of the new birth that is Jesus Christ in your soul, that you would be a power, um, uh, a powerful witness of his resurrection, his exaltation, and certainly of his death and his burial. Because we remember his mercies. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. You probably sang that before in Psalm 89, verse 1. Verse 11 told us to remember Ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ in, verse, or in Ephesians chapter 2. You know, it's, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. What a wonderful hymn that uh, takes from this verse in Lamentations. See, we remember the black days of sin and, all, and of what we have been saved from. Remember the kindness and the love of Christ. We have to remember his words, his words. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. We find that in Acts chapter 20 and verse 35, and that's exactly what Jesus did. He gave all. Why? Because it is more blessed to give. He gave all that we might live now in him and in, uh, with him in eternity. And so we have to remember his words. We, we, we must memorize his words just like we would try to memorize and write down the notes of a, and memorize the things of our daily to-do list. We need to memorize the words of Christ. Colossians 3.16, we're told, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. We already read the verse. It tells us that when Jesus said, The scriptures testify of him. In Jeremiah 15.16, it says, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Thy words. We must remember the words. We at the Harvest Hill Baptist Church believe that the King James Bible is the word of God. And you may or may not agree with us with that. And that's all right. But we do make it our, our final authority. This is, this is what we base our everything we do is based upon that, that Bible. We, we can be sure and we trust every word of it. We're not having to decipher it or interpret it or, or get the opinion of different people. We just trust it as it is. We're so confident that the Bible it gives everything we need to remember Christ. And it is exactly how to know <clears throat> that you have eternal life. It's to tell you how to be saved. It is how to walk in Christ. That we want to give you a free King James Bible. And if you'll just go to our website, it's just harvesthillbaptistchurch.com, harvesthillbaptistchurch.com, all one word. And you'll find a lot of information there, but you'll also find a, a link there to take you to a form that will give you um, a, an opportunity for us to send you the word of God that you might remember Christ a little better. The Harvest Hill Baptist Church is just an independent Baptist church. We hold that the King James Bible is our final authority. We are an old-fashioned, hymn-singing body of believers just trying to grow in the, in the knowledge and the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, so that we might share the good news of the gospel to our neighborhood, our city, and our country, our state, and to the whole world.